AITA for wanting my sister to pay me back for the cans her kids stole from my shed? This happened yesterday. When I came home from work I noticed my shed door was open and the padlock that I used to keep it shut was broken. And I had a lot of bags full of soda cans in there. I tend to drink a lot of soda, so I've built up a lot of cans. And I was going to cash them in at the bottle drop soon. There was more than just my cans missing from the shed too. I was missing some gardening tools, a machete, and a gas can. I went to check my security cameras and early in the morning right after I left for work I saw my three nephews break into my shed using a hammer to smash the lock and taking the cans, as well as the other stuff. I called my sister and she and her husband denied their kids did it. Till I showed up at their house with the footage for my cameras. They were furious with their kids for robbing me and skipping school to do it. I got the other stuff back. The gas can was emptied though, but they'd already cashed all of the cans. I wanted the money from the cans and my nephews had already spent it all on video games and junk food. I demanded to know how much they got from the cans and it was nearly $200. I told my sister she now owes me over $200 for the cans and the broken padlock. My sister and BIL went from being angry at their kids to making excuses for them, and then being angry at me for wanting that money back when I know they have three kids and a mortgage. I said it was either that or I go to the police and press charges. They told me to get out, and I said they have two days to decide how to pay me back before I go to the cops. My nephews are thieves and have stolen from me before. That's why I got the cameras. What my nephews did was most definitely wrong. But I also know my sister and BL can't really afford to pay me back. And they're blowing up my phone and calling me heartless for giving them the ultimatum when I know they are nearly broke after the holidays. AITA for doing that? Info from the comments. Yes I do have insurance. No I'm not going to make a claim because the only actual damage done was to a $10 padlock. And I got back everything else but the stolen cans. The nephews are 16, 15, and 14. Redditor, wouldn't it be a fair compromise to have the kids work off the money they owe you by shoveling snow, doing yard work and other manual labor? Hell, tell them to walk about town picking up cans. Why make the parents pay for their mistake? OP, because those kids have stolen from me several times already. I always got the stuff back. But it was a fight, and I've banned their kids from my house because of it. Making them pay me back is the only way to make them learn. I don't want those kids anywhere near my house. Even to do work. I do all of my own yard work regularly and even kind of enjoy it. But those brats just hem and haw any time they're made to do chores. And I'd have to watch them the entire time. It's not worth it to make them work. I'd rather just have the money back. The parents can't afford therapy. Both of them work to pay their mortgage, so their kids are left unsupervised a lot. My sister and BAL have always given me flack when their kids stole from me. When I wanted the stolen stuff back they always acted like I was a jerk and then made their kids give me the fakest apologies I've ever heard. I'm done being nice. Either they or their kids pay me back or I go to police. Update 1. Well I went to the police. I tried to work with my sister and BIL when I called them this morning because I didn't want to wait till after they were done with work to speak with them. Not only did they refuse any sort of suggested way of repaying me, they actually said that it was my fault for having the cans there to begin with. They said I tempted my nephews with the money. I was enraged and said I was done with them. Then they started blowing up my phone all over again. My eldest nephew sent me a picture of him holding a soda can and giving me the finger. So that was it. I went to the police station and filed the report. Gave them a copy of the video footage of my nephew stealing from my shed. I gave them the broken lock they smashed. Showed them all of the texts, which were screenshot and also given as evidence. Hell, I even gave them the photo my eldest nephew sent me of him flipping me off. I don't know if my nephews have been arrested yet. But I'm assured they will be. Perhaps some community service will change their attitudes. I did tell police that I found it worrisome that my nephews had taken the machete. But it was as I thought. They classified it as a tool. Especially since they took a lot of other actual tools. Other than the machete, they also some gardening shears, a steel rake, two shovels, one of them being one of those folding camping ones, a full two-gallon gas can, a cheap power drill I got for like $5 used, an electric hedge trimmer, and a small electric chainsaw that was also used. They didn't touch the lawn mower, weed whacker, extension cords, or the old radio I had in there. No idea why they took what they did. But I guess they figured they could resell them or something. But I got all of that back, minus the gas that was in the gas can. No idea what they used it for. But it was old gas anyway. After they first broke into my shed, they took what they could by hand. And then they came back with some shopping carts that I'm guessing they also stole. But it took them a few trips to get all of the cans. And they didn't bother to even try and close the door when they were done. Either way though my nephews are now in trouble for trespassing, larceny and harassment. 
I'm sure either today or tomorrow my phone is gonna be blowing up like mad when the cops come for those kids. But I said it was my hill to die on, and I meant it. I don't even care if I get the money back now. They had their chance. I've already replaced the lock on the shed with a much stronger one. And the machete will no longer be kept in the shed. I've also talked to a few of my neighbors about what happened. They told me cans have actually been going missing around the neighborhood lately. If anybody had a bag of cans sitting out, it'd get stolen. Can't say if my nephews were the culprits. But if they were, then they've been doing this for months. I've also spoken with my relatives. And they're fed up with my sister and BL too. So they're all on my side at least. Which is good to know. I was worried they'd turn on me since I filed the police report. But no, I just got a lot of good for you, and it's about damn time those kids faced some justice. I wasn't the only one in the family they stole from. Many in the comments tried to say I should offer that my nephews work off the $200. There's no way I was going to do that. The little shits hate doing any work they don't want to do. And will just stand around griping and acting like the world is against them. And they'd have to be supervised the entire time. Which is another thing I don't want to do. Plus, I banned them from my house for good reason. The theft started with food and snacks. And then went on to DVDs and video games. That made me start putting my initials on cases and discs with permanent markers. So I was able to show when my nephews had taken something of mine. They tried the, oh he let us borrow them, excuse a few times. But I always called bullshit. And then made them return the stuff they took. Which they always acted like I was a jerk for doing. And then when they were made to apologize to me each time, they were the fakest apologies I've ever heard. The final straw that banned my nephews from my house was when they used the spare hidden key to my house to get in and stole three six-packs of my favorite blood orange beer from my fridge, along with raiding my kitchen for anything else they wanted. One of them took a dump in my bathroom and not only didn't flush, but also intentionally pissed on the floor. They tried to say it wasn't them. But I knew it was. The beer they stole was even hidden in their room. My sister and BL barely punished them and basically gave me an equivalent to boys will be boys, then berated me when I said they and their kids were no longer welcome at my home ever again. And that's all why I got the cameras. When I had them installed I told no one. Which was a very smart idea because my nephews had no idea they were there when they broke into my shed. Guess I was their easiest target. When I can afford it, I plan to get more cameras inside my house too. Update 2. My entitled nephews stole from me one time too many. This time I got them arrested, and now my sister and BIL have to deal with the fallout. And I really don't care anymore. In a prior post in a different subreddit, I asked if I was the bad guy for wanting to call police on my nephews for stealing from me. And the overwhelming support I got made me realize that standing my ground was the best thing for me to do. About midway last week when I came home from work I noticed my shed door was open and the padlock that I used to keep it shut was broken. And I had a lot of bags full of soda cans in there. I and my friends tend to drink a lot of soda, so I've built up a lot of cans over the course of about a year, and I was going to cash them in at the bottle drop soon because I like big payouts. It's 10 cents a can where I live after all. But there was more than just my bags of cans missing from the shed too. They took my gardening shears, a steel rake, two shovels, one of them being one of those folding camping ones, a full two-gallon gas can, a cheap power drill I got for like $5 used, an electric hedge trimmer, and a small electric chainsaw that was also used, and a machete. They didn't touch the lawn mower. Weed whacker, extension cords, or the old radio I had in there. No idea why they took what they did. But I guess they figured they could resell them or something. My sister and BIL went from being angry at their kids to making excuses for them, and then being angry at me for wanting that money back when I know they have three kids and a mortgage. I said it was either that or I go to the police and press charges. They told me to get out, and I said they have two days to decide how to pay me back before I go to the cops. I got back everything else my nephews stole, machete and gas can included. Though they'd already used the gas for something. But over the next couple of days my sister and BIL were blowing up my phone with a ton of messages. Both verbal and text. At first they were calling me heartless because it was right after the holidays and they have three kids and a mortgage. Then they started gaslighting me. Then even threatening me. And all of this would go in a repeating cycle. My nephews chimed in from another cell phone and were sending me lots of messages of their own. Which were more fake apologies and gaslighting. My eldest nephew even sent me a picture of himself holding a soda can and giving me the middle finger. So I guess they weren't taking my threats of going to police seriously because, family. When I last spoke with my sister and BIL, they refused to negotiate any sort of method of repayment for what my nephews did. Even when I suggested they just sell the video games that were purchased with the money from the cans. Then they had the audacity to say I'd actually tempted my nephews by having the cans in my shed to begin with. Oh yes, I'm the devil snake that tempted my nephews with a shed full of cans that just screamed, money money. So that was it. I went to the police station that morning and filed the report. 
gave them a copy of the video footage of my nephew stealing from my shed. I gave them the broken lock they smashed. Showed them all of the texts, which were screenshot and also given as evidence. Hell, I even gave them a copy of the photo my eldest nephew sent me of him flipping me off. I did tell police that I found it worrisome that my nephews had taken the machete, but they classified it as a tool. Especially since they took a lot of other actual tools. So fair enough on that I suppose. But my nephews were indeed arrested on Saturday. Police came to their house and my sister and BIL were forced to let them in because they had a warrant. Apparently all three of my nephews went from being cocky little shits to crying like babies when they were being put in cuffs. I know this because a neighbor I'm acquainted with that sort of friends with my sister was there to see it, and shortly after the arrest my sister and BIL were blowing up my phone again. They weren't able to get their kids out of jail till Monday morning. And now the boys are being charged with larceny, willful destruction of property slash vandalism, and harassment. The police took this whole case pretty seriously as there has been complaints about my nephews for some time. But nothing was proven until now. The past few months bags of cans have actually been going missing all over the area. Don't know if it was my nephews or not. But they're likely suspects, and with word spreading of their arrest, let's hope other neighbors with security cameras come forward with more footage. My sister and BL showed up at my house too. I refused to open the door and told them that this all happened because they are enablers who refuse to hold their kids accountable for their actions. That made them just scream and pound on my door more till I threatened to call police on them too. And since I've done it already, they know I mean it now. So they left without any more trouble. But they went back to blowing up my phone. I didn't block my sister or BL. Instead, I decided to just save all of the messages they send me because I've made the decision to take them to small claims court over this. I don't really need or want the money, and have already replaced the destroyed padlock with a much better one. However the kids aren't the only ones who need to be taught a lesson. In the end I hope I put them in enough of a hole that they learn not to screw with me ever again. I also have the full support of my family on this. My parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, etc. They're all supporting me in this because my nephews have stolen from them too. And after banning my nephews from my house, some of them did the same. I'm going to push for my nephews to get community service. And the reason why isn't just because it's a good idea, but also because I know that they'll hate that the most. Whenever made to do any kind of work they don't want to do, they just stand around griping and act like the whole world is against them. So hardly anything ever gets done. Perhaps a few hundred hours of unpaid work will teach them some manners. They've been spoiled far too much. Update 3. Sister and BL had the money to pay me back the entire time. Well this is stupidly anticlimactic. I figured that my sister and BIL were gonna dig their heels in even deeper after the shit that's already gone down. But they actually caved. I filed a lawsuit against them in small claims for the actions of their kids. In the suit I was asking for $500. This was for the stolen cans, the destroyed lock, the cost of the replacement lock, which was a much better and more expensive one, the cost of filing with the courts, and emotional damages for the harassment. A friend whose father is a lawyer gave me a free consultation and said I have a very strong case because of the camera footage I have of both my nephews stealing from me, and of my sister and BIL pounding on my front door. Plus all of the messages they sent me. When my sister and BL were served, they called me freaking out. They said I couldn't do this to them. So I retorted that this is the price they are paying for not parenting their kids and letting them become entitled little thieves. And if they wish to speak to me again, it will either be when I see them in court, or if they decide to pay me the $500 I'm suing for. Then I hung up on them. Well yesterday evening I was having some friends over after work. We were just chilling out and watching a movie. None of us were in the mood for video games since we were tired from the day. And we just wanted a chill evening. But then I got a knock at the door. When I looked outside, there was my sister and BL. And they looked very unhappy. I opened the door, but left the screen door shut. Then asked them what they were doing at my house. They told me that they're tired of fighting because everyone is against them. And fully admitted how badly they effed up by letting this go as far as they did. And just wanted to make peace. My friends were standing in full view behind me. So there were witnesses to this. BL then slid an envelope through a crack in the door that contained $500 in $50 bills. He said it was from his private savings account. Then told me from now on they'll make sure my nephews are duly punished for their actions. They didn't ask me to drop the charges, but pleaded with me to at least be lenient. I said I was only pushing for community service. Which is pretty lenient. And if we cooperate for that, then hopefully the judge will agree. They sighed and said they'd cooperate if that's all I wanted. Then left without making any sort of a fuss. My friends all congratulated me on holding my ground. Others in my family later did the same. That's when I found out from my parents that they actually threatened to disown my sister if she and her husband didn't make some changes for the better. So now they are. It may be a forced change. But it's the best we'll probably see out of them.
My mom paid my sister and BIL a visit after they repaid me too. She told me that my nephews were not playing video games. In fact, every single video game related thing was put away somewhere, and so was the TV that my nephews would game and watch movies on. All three nephews were in their rooms most of the time, and were very rude and unwelcoming to their grandmother. But my sister claims they are dealing with the situation. So yeah, I've dropped the lawsuit now that I've been paid what I wanted. But my nephews are still going to court for theft. And are now getting the parenting they should have been getting long ago. I've also been assured that they will not be coming near my house again anytime soon. And are strictly only to be either at school or at home. Info from the comments. My nephews won't be welcome anywhere near my house for a long time to come, my sister and BIL are now basically forced to do the parenting they should have already been doing. And everyone else I on the family has been on my side about this because my nephews had basically gotten everyone to hate them. Update 4. My eldest nephew went mental on my house. Problem is that my sister and BIL blamed me for the divide in their family, which didn't end well for them as no one in the family was on their side about it. Everything was put on them and their bad parenting. And without me to blame, they just became silent and bitter. Half the family don't want to associate with them, and now their own kids are divided because the eldest refuses to change. It got so bad that my eldest nephew resorted to something so incredibly dumb that you're not gonna want to believe it. In the middle of the night he sneaked out and assaulted my house with a pair of his dad's claw hammers. I say a pair because he literally had one in each hand. The first thing he did was start smashing the new lock on my shed, and it didn't break. But he heavily damaged it to the point it was no longer usable and I had to later remove it with bolt cutters. He also did a lot of damage to the shed door with the hammer's claws. I awoke to the sounds of the hammers, and called the police after peeking out my bedroom window and seeing someone outside hitting the shed. Though I didn't realize it was him at first because he had his face covered with a creepy looking mask. He saw the bedroom lights come on and chucked one of the hammers through my window. There was broken glass everywhere, and I'm lucky I didn't cut my feet on any of it because I was barefoot. Then my nephew started beating on my back door with the remaining hammer. He did major damage breaking the knob and the window on the door, and also tore into the door itself with the hammer claw. I was worried the door wouldn't hold out, so I yelled police were on their way, and he took off before they arrived. The night vision on my camera showed it was him. He had a mask on, but was wearing his school hoodie, as well as his Nike shoes that were also pretty identifiable since his brothers don't have a pair like them. His fingerprints were also on the hammer he threw at my window. My nephews had already all been fingerprinted when they were arrested the first time. So police matched the ones on the hammer to him. When the cops came for my eldest nephew, he obviously denied it was him. But there's no one else it could have been. The other hammer was found in his room, along with the clothes and mask he wore. All of which were taken as evidence. The mask was of a Star Wars character I was told is called, the Grand Inquisitor. This time though, his parents did nothing to try and protect him. And they didn't try to pass the blame on me either. They just let their son be taken away screaming. I wasn't there to see the arrest. But I was told by my sister that my eldest nephew was switching back and forth from crying that he didn't do anything wrong, to screaming that it was all my fault and he had to get back at me. The boy had to go through a serious mental evaluation, and was found to be potentially bipolar. Doesn't really excuse what he did though. Later on when he was properly diagnosed as bipolar, he started blaming everything he did wrong on that. And acted like he should be vilified just for getting treatment for it. But he ended up having a month-long stint in juvenile hall. They got my nephew properly medicated, and he pleaded guilty to forego court again in exchange for more community service and mandatory counseling, as well as probation this time. His dad came to my house and personally replaced the broken window and door. Though he barely said a word to me while doing it, my two younger nephews are still excluding their older brother from pretty much everything. And he still hasn't apologized for attacking my home either. He's also unfortunately repeating a school year because of how badly his grades tanked. Which his parents are still very unhappy about. My two younger nephews dropped by on their own in July to personally apologize to me. They said that they always just followed their brother's lead, and he made everything they were doing seem so fun. But the punishments for the crimes are not worth the kind of fun they were having, and they don't want anything to do with it anymore. They want their fun uncle back and asked if we could start over. I said we can, but they'll have to earn back my trust. Which they happily agreed to. My eldest nephew had his 17th birthday a few months ago, and basically got nothing. Not even a cake. It was part of his punishment for what he'd done. I can only imagine how much money he's cost his parents in the past year alone. He led his brothers to steal from me and then destroyed my bedroom window and back door. I imagine in total with the lawsuit I previously filed, and replacing both the door and window cost them over $1,000. Doors and windows are not cheap. Meanwhile my youngest nephew had his birthday a month after that, and got a new mountain bike among his gifts. This really upset my eldest nephew and he slashed the tires on the bike with a kitchen knife. Which landed him in even more trouble. 
I know a thing or two about fixing bikes, so I went out and bought new tubes and tires for the bike, and put them on it. So the bike is fine, and my nephew thanked me a lot for fixing it. My eldest nephew resorted to trying to run away because he wasn't being enabled anymore. He just walked out, got on his bike with a backpack full of stuff, and rode off. His parents quickly reported him missing because he left a goodbye letter that basically blamed me and his bipolar for all his problems. In the letter he stated that he can't wait till he's 18 to get away from us all. So he was doing us a favor by getting rid of himself sooner. But he came back three days later without his bike or backpack, and looking beat up. He wouldn't tell anyone what happened, we still don't know. But he was chewed out for continuously using me as a scapegoat for his personal issues, because blaming me was the first thing he did after he got back. I didn't make him steal from me, I didn't make him attack my house, I didn't make him run away. That was all him. And he nearly ended up back in juvie for running off because he violated his probation. But he got off easy somehow. Currently he spends his days pretty much in his room when not in school, or doing chores, or going to counseling. He finished his community service, but his probation will last till he's 18. He got some lenience for being diagnosed as bipolar. But it couldn't get him off the hook. And believe me, he tried many times. Once they told him what was wrong with him, it became his excuse for everything. But plenty of people go their whole lives with that same mental condition and never do the kinds of things he did. I've been mending things with my two younger nephews, but I don't want to be around the eldest at all. And the feeling is clearly mutual on his part. I've only seen him once in person the past few months, and he glared at me with more hate than I've ever seen from anyone before stomping away. He can't paint me as the villain anymore without being called out on it, so there isn't much he can do other than just try and get through this. For the most part he's totally shut down since school started. I'm told he barely speaks, even at school. My other nephews tell me he's getting laughed at and ostracized. Which I don't think is going to help him get better. My sister and BL are also not on the best terms with me right now as well, but they can't exactly put any blame on me either. They know it was all on them and their bad parenting. I've basically forced them to be more active in their kids' lives. Which they should have been doing already. They complain a lot of being tired from work and keeping an eye on their kids. So whenever we talk as of late, it's always awkward and forced. They don't come to my house, or me to theirs. But we do see each other at my parents' house. And our mother demands we be civil there. Which I have no problem with. My two younger nephews have regained most of their privileges. They got their TV and video games back. But my eldest nephew isn't allowed on them at all. I'm told he's got some electronic entertainment in his room. But what kind I don't know. I just know he spends most of his time in there unless he has to be somewhere else. My eldest nephew is also not welcome pretty much anywhere in the family anymore. I've recently heard from my parents that they don't even want to see him on Thanksgiving or Christmas Eve this year because they are sick of his behavior and petty thievery. I guess I can understand that. But even I feel it's a bit harsh. My sister and BL do as well because they are threatening to boycott if he can't come to either holiday. I can't stand that kid, and would not want him in my house either. So I can understand why they've made that decision. But I don't think excluding him from everything and everyone is gonna make him better. It's gonna take a long time for my eldest nephew to mend bridges. If they can even be mended at all. The way things stand, he may try running off again once he's of age. Unless the last time scared him too much to try it again. But hopefully things will get better for him in time if it's not too late to fix his behavior. I may not like him, but he's still my nephew, and I care. But I'm kinda powerless to do anything. So for now the most I can do is just keep my nose out of it and offer support where I can. Info from the comments. Redditor. So he's bipolar and his parents were absolute shit until suddenly he gets into trouble. He probably feels like everyone turned their backs on him. I feel terrible for him honestly. Bipolar from my understanding, gets really bad right around 16 to 18 years old. And everyone in the family wrote him off. OP, I wouldn't say they wrote him off. More like they just don't want him around this year. They never said the ban extends to next year. My parents just think that if he's not allowed to come, he'll maybe understand after a while that they can ban him again if he doesn't work on getting his behavior in check. Perhaps after some time of medication and counseling, things will get better. At least I hope. From what I know of bipolar, it has varying degrees of severity. But you also have to take into account that he was also badly spoiled and let do whatever he wanted. I've heard of kids who had no mental problems exhibiting the same behavior just because they were spoiled growing up. Honestly he probably would have been fine if my sister and BIL had actually did their jobs as parents long ago.